Black China held me hostage and I'm pretty sure she was trying to sex traffic me. This is the only time in my life I've ever felt real fear and it is the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. I finally feel safe enough to share the story because this happened back on August 10th and it's been a little bit of time. I don't have time to go into the details, but China and I met on Instagram. As you can see, we were DMing. I ended up sending her my number. She FaceTimed me at 3 a.m. LA time. My best friend, Alex Marker, was on the FaceTime call as well. As you can see, Black China follows my best friend, Alex Marker, on Instagram. So while China was FaceTiming with me and Alex, she invited me over to her house at 4 a.m. In hindsight, going to Black China's house at 4 a.m. was probably stupid, but I'm me. I love a good adventure, and come on, who's going to turn down going to Black China's house and meeting Dream Kardashian? Long story short, I get there. I have to sign an NDA, but this NDA was unlike any other NDA I've ever signed in my life. I had to put down all kinds of identifying features about myself on this NDA, like my eye color, my hair color, my height, what I was wearing. I was like, okay, this is really strange. Right after I signed the NDA is when China very intimidatingly said, all the stories you read about me kidnapping people are true. Now, I've never seen any stories about China kidnapping people. I read them after this happened to me. I got a gut feeling I was in danger, but there was nothing I could do because I was in a gated home. I couldn't unlock the gate and get out. This is the only photo I have from inside China's house. It was in her guest house, like a sign. My phone was on 3% and she wouldn't let me charge it, so there was really nothing I could do. I was really screwed. For six hours, China held me hostage. She drank an entire bottle of Casamigos in front of me. She, like, wouldn't let me be alone. Every time she had to use the bathroom, she would make me go into the bathroom with her. She took shits in front of me. She forced me to take a wet towel and wipe off all of my makeup. She was doing weird things all night, like comparing her hand sizes and trying on my shoes. She kept telling me that I had to stay until 10 a.m. because that's when Dream was going to be out of the home. And she was going to go crazy on me at 10 a.m. She kept saying things like that. I really didn't know what was going on. She kept saying things like, I'll be honest with you about what's going on here once you're honest with me. At about 9.45 a.m., China FaceTimed some woman named Donna, who told me she was in the escorting industry on FaceTime, and told me that I was good product. China and her were going back and forth about me. They were under the impression that I was transgender. I am a cisgender female. I don't know how China got that impression. I started texting my friends. I was freaking out. I'm out of time, like, for part two. Part two of Black China holding me hostage and sex trafficking me. Now, a lot of people want to say, oh, Ava, you make up so much stuff. You're lying. Um, I've never made up anything except for the Jeffrey Kanye rumor, and that happened two years ago, and that was a total joke. And that whole joke kind of gave me such a big platform that I'm able to meet people like Black China now because of my following and who I know now. But I would never lie about something like this serious. And if you don't believe me, this is a screenshot of my location that my friend took while I was in China's house. If her address is like Googleable, I'm sure you can compare this. But enough about that. In part one, I had left off um, where Donna was on FaceTime with China. Now, I wasn't supposed to hear this phone call with Donna at all. But for context, China had drank an entire bottle of Casamigos in the six hours I was in her home, like fully downed the entire bottle and she was blackout drunk and she was like playing Nickelback music videos on repeat. So she was so drunk, she like answered this FaceTime in front of me. Donna wasn't happy about this and Donna was like, well, is she trans? Is she trans? Like asking. That's when the phone was handed to me and, and Donna was like, well, I'm just going to ask you myself, are you trans? I told her, no, I'm cisgender. I can prove it. I'm literally on my period right now. Like, what do I have to do to tell you I'm not trans? She, for some reason, wasn't buying it. She's like, I trust my cis China. She says you are. And then we were all going back and forth. My phone's at like 2% at this point. I didn't know what to do and Donna said she was going to come after 10 a.m. when Dream was out of the house and she was going to come check me out herself. So I knew I was screwed. My phone's about to die. I didn't know what to do. I texted my friends and let them know, like, what was happening. And I frantically 
texted the guy I was staying with in LA being like, I need you to save me. The times on these screenshots are a little different than like the timeline I'm giving you guys because this happened while I was in LA and I was on LA time and I just took these screenshots and I'm in New Jersey, so it's New Jersey time. But so I had texted the guy I was staying with this and my phone was probably on 2% at this point. I'm frozen in fear. China's going back and forth with this Donna woman about how much I'm worth and like if I'm trans or not and they were arguing and I didn't know what to do. The guy I was staying with immediately called me and he's like, run. China's grabbing at my phone. I'm, I'm staying on the phone with him. I know my phone's about to die. And I ran. I ran out of the house and I ran to the gate and I hopped over the gate, threw myself over that gate with everything left in me. And I ran down the street and I hid and find a bush. And then the guy I was staying with was able to help me like get home. For everyone thinking that I'm lying, this is a screenshot I posted in part two and like my location wasn't 100% accurate, but this is like a second screenshot my friend took of my location, like when I was texting him, like scared because I was getting trafficked. And look at the house, like I was in the guest part of the house. Take a good look at that and compare it to Black China's house. I was in her house. How could I fake that? I'm just going to come out and I'm going to share with you guys all why I decided to come out with this story. Last time I was in LA, I was introduced to a girl who was in a very similar situation as me. Someone with more power and influence than her, she was just like an Instagram model, invited her over and was offering help in the industry. She went and she ended up getting brutally assaulted and I want to make this clear that this girl was the perfect victim. She did everything right. She went to the police. She filed reports. She did everything she could. And then when she came forward with her story and spoke about it on Instagram, the guy who did this to her got her Instagram deleted. But before she got her Instagram deleted, so many girls came forward and told her that the same thing happened to them. And she told me specifically that if she had known that this stuff was happening she never would have gone over to his house her life got like ruined because she wasn't aware of the dangerous situation she was getting herself into she was naive i didn't take my videos down because i was scared of being sued i took my videos down because someone china was associated with sent me this threat to deplatform me if i kept telling my story now, I can understand how to you guys that's not really a big deal, but it's a huge deal to someone like me whose main source of income comes from my Instagram. It could literally ruin my entire life, like having that taken away. I have contacts at Meta, so I emailed them everything and they've been made fully aware and they are looking into it. To me, innocent people don't try and take away someone's livelihood. But that's exactly what happened to my friend deplatforming someone, scaring them into silence, sending them legal letters and stuff is like a way to get people to shut up so they can continue whatever behavior they're doing. If I had seen this story, I never would have gone to her house. I never would have traumatized myself. And I'm really lucky, I think, based off of my perception of the events that I got out. But I didn't see this story. There, was, I did, there wasn't enough awareness around it. So I ended up in a, what I perceive to be a very dangerous situation. I'm not sharing my story for follows. I'm not sharing my story for clout. I'm sharing this because whether you believe me or not, I'm hoping it puts some doubt in people's heads before they put themselves in a similar situation. This was to the trafficking hotline. I could have came out months ago, but I was just too scared. I decided to be brave after hearing my friend's story. I was so terrified after this happened, like I couldn't even hang out with Monty Lopez. I was getting anxiety attacks around anyone famous. Like when I was hanging out with Monty, I was texting my friends and begging them to just come pick me up because not that Monty was doing anything wrong, I was just so anxious. I'm scared to be doing this right now, but if I bring awareness to this, it could save the next person from this trauma.